to our class this morning. We are glad that you are here. We have uh, visitors with us today, and uh, we're thankful that you have come to be a part of this Bible study hour. This is our seekers class, and our goal is to answer Bible questions. Uh, we don't always know ahead of time what our questions are going to be, but uh, we want this to be a discussion class, and anyone that has comments that you'd like to make, please feel free to do so. I have a file folder uh, full of questions that uh, have been asked. Uh, some of them were submitted on the sermon suggestion form uh, at the end of last year. We'll be using some of those. Others are questions that have been emailed to me. And if you have a question that you would like for us to discuss, Please feel free to email it or write it down and hand it to me, and we'll try to get to it uh, at some point during uh, this quarter. Our question today is based upon 1 John chapter 3. If you want to open your Bible there, 1 John chapter 3. There's really a couple of different parts to this question. I'll just read it as it is written. It says, uh, what does it mean in 1 John 3, 6 through 9 when it says, whoever abides in him does not sin? And then secondly, whoever is born of God does not sin, verse 9. And then the questioner says, I thought that we all sin. Um, let's read the text first of all. Someone read for us 1 John chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Who who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Okay. It sounds, let's, uh, if you're not with us, 1 John chapter 3, verse 6 through 9 is where we are. It sounds that John is um, making a pretty uh, straightforward statement there. It appears that John is saying that if you have been born of God, you will not sin. And uh, if you are of God, you cannot sin. Uh, I guess... Um, one of the things we need to do is talk about uh, uh, who is uh, John talking to here and who is he talking about. One of our goals in this class is to encourage us all to be students of the Word of God. Uh, we will not agree on every uh, issue and every question that we discuss, and that's okay. But we want to challenge each other. We want to encourage each other to be better students. Now, when you're studying the Bible, there are a number of questions that ought to be asked about every text. Uh, one is, who is the author? And uh, it's very clear here that John is the author. Uh, who is the author speaking to? And if he's saying something, who is the author speaking about? And so I guess the first question is, when John says if one uh, uh, that some cannot sin, who is John talking about in this passage? Because there's some discussion about this, some questions. Is he speaking to the church? Okay, is John talking to the church? Is he speaking to Christians or about Christians? Or is he speaking about people who are not Christians? Speaking to Christians. How, how can we know that? Because what? He calls them dear children. Uh, what, what would be the emphasis of dear children here? Why, why would John... What is John, uh, why would he call them dear, dear children? Children shows a relationship, Jeff, between an adult figure and a minor. So when you're saying child or children, you have an adult talking to a um, child of a lesser age or a person of a lesser age. Okay. You think, you, now here in this case, are we talking about uh, I'm children? I'm physically, you know, physically, that's right. a definition. Okay. Why else would John... Well, you've mentioned the idea of a relationship. Uh, John is talking about, yes, Steve? Unless you are a, 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 the idea of a child, you can't marry the kingdom of heaven. 
All right, Jesus said in Matthew 18 and 19, didn't he? Unless you become like children, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, look at Galatians chapter 3 for just a moment. Galatians chapter 3. And let's read uh, verse 26, I believe. <coughs> You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. All right, you are sons of God. Uh, some translations say you are children of God. So everyone, uh, the next verse says that you become children of God through faith by being baptized into Christ. And so everyone who becomes a Christian is a child of God. We are children of God. But John doesn't say in this text, children of God. What does John say? My children. Why does he say my children? These are people he had talked about relationship with earlier. All right. These are probably people that John had built some kind of relationship with. Maybe John had converted some of these people. Uh, maybe John had spent a lot of time studying the Word with these people. Maybe John had spent time nurturing these people. He looked at them as his children. It was a term of relationship. And it was also a term of affection. And so John calls them children. How else can we know that these people are Christians? Verse 1 and verse 2. Talking about children of God. All right. The first couple of verses of chapter 3. Read that for us, please. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. All right. Right there. That's enough to know right there. The Father has bestowed upon us and John places all of these Christians in the same category where he is. He includes them uh, with himself. And then uh, probably, uh, if you go back to uh, 1 John chapter 1, he'll talk a little bit more about the fact that, uh, that these people have been born by the Word of God. And so John is talking to Christians. He's talking about Christians. And he seems to say here that... Uh, if you are a Christian, you cannot sin. You will not sin. Is that a true statement? It's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> John 1 and 9 says that we confess our sins. So. Yeah. Do what? So just prior to that, he says that we confess our sins. Re wait, read that. Let's read that, Russell. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our life. What, what verse is that? Chapter 1, verses 1. 1 John 1, 9, and John says, If we confess our sins, who's the we there? Children of God. Oh, don't you hate it when the Bible does that? Like, you know, contradicts itself like that? Because John says in verse... 9 of chapter 1, if we confess our sins, and he seems to say we have sins, and if we confess them, God will forgive us, and then you turn over two pages and John says, if you're born of God, you cannot sin. How in the world are we going to justify that? 